were horrified by the reemergence of the Kahana movement into prominence, but then when we look back, we realize, wait a second, they were there all along. Why didn't we notice this? In fact, for decades, they've been in Israel's ruling party. And then by that, I mean Moshe Feiglin. You know, now that the Kahanists are once again accepted into the Israeli mainstream, so now he doesn't mind coming out to the annual memorial services for Kahana and speaking there where he's warmly greeted and he speaks from the podium saying about that all, sorry, that all the dear and good faces that I see here, they're old friends, they're mishpocha, meaning they're family. This is my family, the Kahana movement. Talking about Kahana, he was right. What can you do? He was right. This is the slogan of the Kahana movement. Kahana was right. And he's declaring it openly. Coming out as a Kahanist. We're now in the phase when people are admitting their Kahanism all along. Rabbi Kahana was a man of truth. And with that truth, friends, we will win. Well, this Kahanist was brought into the Likud party. All right? Even in recent years, Netanyahu has doubled down on it and offered Moshe Feiglin ministerial positions in his government. So this isn't a marginal figure in any sense. Just a few years ago, he was the deputy speaker of the Knesset. Uh, we w it wasn't a real shocker. I mean, when we think about what he did once he was in that position, I mean, during the, the 2014 assault on Gaza, he was saying the IDF, the Israeli army, shall designate certain open areas in which the civilian population will be concentrated. Subsequent to the elimination, Gaza will become part of Israel and will be populated by Jews. So openly calling for more ethnic cleansing, for more conquest, for more murder. This is Feiglin. Feiglin, of course, He's really unabashed about his race hate here. He, he puts promotional videos out, you know, when he's trying to uh, win more adherence of him, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of just like sampling popular Hollywood movies of Sparta and, and, you know, depicting him as slaying Palestinians, slaying the EU, killing the UN. Th this is the kinds of messages that he puts out. And in that position as deputy speaker, he was also inciting for Jews to go and take over Al-Aqsa, which is part of the Kahanist plot, as I explained, to take over the Al-Aqsa compound in East Jerusalem. So here is a, a, a flyer that he put out, purifying the place from land-thieving enemies of Israel and building the temple on the ruins of the mosques. We're talking again about the most beautiful building in the whole country. All right, And of course, this wasn't a one-off. Over the years, Kahanists have tried continuously to assault the Dome of the Rock and to blow it up. Yoel Lerner, Baruch Ben Yosef, Alan Goodman, Baruch Marzel, Israel Ariel, all of these men were arrested for that crime, stopped just before they could carry it out. Now, when I say to take over the Aqsa Mosque, let me explain what I mean so that it's 100% clear. We're talking about the Dome of the Rock, the Golden Dome. We're talking about the Silver Dome, Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam. And they want to bulldoze the entire thing. And they want to build their uh, cubic temple, a temple slash abattoir. And what I mean by that is that they plan to sacrifice animals there and for that to replace prayer worship. That no longer will Jews pray in synagogues, but instead they will go to the temple and the temple priests will take animals and slaughter them and bring them up to the altar and there they will cast the meat onto the flames and the smoke will go up to heaven and thus Yahweh will be satiated and it's not one, and it's not 10, and it's not 100. We're talking about 10,000 animals at a time on any odd Jewish holiday. So according to the Talmud texts, we're talking about priests being literally, quote, up to their knees in blood on Jewish holidays from the amount of blood, the amount of 
animal sacrifice that went on and, and that they want to repeat, that they want to bring back as part of the Jewish praxis. This is what they want to replace Al-Aqsa with. So if it was just marginal figures, you know, voices in the desert that no one listens to, eh, nicha. but we're talking about rabbis who receive the support of the Israeli government, of the chief rabbinate, of the Israeli Ministry of Education, of the Israeli Ministry of Culture. Israel Ariel, one of those men that plotted to take over the Al-Aqsa Mosque by force, he is now the chief rabbi of the Templar movement, as Dan Cohen can tell us, working on an important documentary about this topic. And Ariel was a Kahanist through and through. In fact, when Kahana ran for election, Israel Ariel was his number two on the Kach party uh, you know, candidates for Knesset. And when he comes to the mic, he just lets it rip. He just isn't embarrassed at all. He says straight up, we will conquer Iraq, Turkey. We will get to Iran too. Tell me this isn't true, Dan. We recorded him ourselves in, in, in speaking to his adherents. The mosques and the Christian spires and their crosses come down. If not, you kill all of their males by sword. You only leave the woman. And this man is on the Israeli government payroll. And he's calling to commit ethnic cleansing, not only in Israel-Palestine, but well beyond that. 